Hello dear friends, it's time today to talk about spiritual and philosophical themes in the face of so much saturation of economy. Some will thank me because they are already saturated with so much economy, even though it is the thermometer of change and the most visible part of what goes on behind the scenes. Opinion piece. In such a perfection, a spiritual transmutation of the human being. The philosopher's stone symbolizes perfection. The end of the human being is self-realization. The great work is the mother of all works. The meaning of life as personal transmutation. Keep in silence, you understand. Speaking, you speak. Ascent from the individual mind to the universal mind. Alchemy is a language encoded with symbols. The royal art uses the royal water of the alchemists. The water of life has the power of transmutation. It is a clear water reduced to its tiniest atoms. It allows access to a higher perception of the universe. The universal solvent of alchemy was called Alcahest. Isaac Newton devoted more time to alchemy than to physics. Alchemy was considered a serious science in Europe. Truth is the discovery of the self hidden under the veil of appearance. Pranya Paramita means the perfection of the transcendent wisdom. Holy Sophia or Sapiens means holy wisdom in Christianity. Humankind is learning to recognize its connection to the Creator. The lesson is that everything is connected to everything and that we are part of everything. Truth cannot, can only be experienced intuitively through the heart. People like to stay warm and fuzzy in their little worlds of delusions. Some Greek philosophers held that truth was either inaccessible to mortals or not accessible to mortals. We are being tested to believe in ourselves and in our inner knowledge. Let's start. There are many works in life but the mother of all works is the spiritual transmutation of the human being described in the medic tradition. Insta philosophy is very clear that the supreme goal of life is spiritual realization, but Western philosophy is not so clear. The term self-realization has been used in various theories of psychology to refer to the realization of the individual's own potential. Examples of self-realization are the expression of one's creativity, the search for spiritual enlightenment, the pursuit of knowledge, and the desire to help society. True motivation is the tendency to realize oneself as much as possible as the basic right for self-realization, happiness. The end of the human being or his happiness is something strictly individual and consists in his self-realization. Some are happy making money, others are happy receiving honors. Everyone possesses the secret of his own happiness, but for that you have to know yourself well, of course, and know what you want really. Each person has a function in his society and to perform it well we must, he must acquire virtues that help him to do so. But if there is a function proper to the human being as such, happiness will consist in exercising it throughout life and the virtue that helps it will be the most perfect. The actions closest to ourselves are those that make us happiest, and there is nothing closer to us than 
our own thought. Happiness is contemplative rather than active, which does not imply ceasing to do good works. Another element is necessary for happiness, sharing it and leaving a, a community governed by good laws. Ethics thus requires politics in the good sense of the word. Emetic tradition. Emeticism is a philosophical and religious tradition based mainly on texts attributed to Hermes Trimagistas, the thrice great. Some of the tenets of the emetic body of doctrine are the world soul or anima mundi, universal energy or prana, life a personal transmutation and meditation as a technique of ascension from the individual mind to the region of the universal great mind. According to the Amethysts, alchemy would not be a mere proto-science but a language codified through symbols that would allow the initiate to access a perception of a supra-historical order in which nature and the human being is himself are in a state of creation. Philosophical Hermeticism is based on a set of writings that appears in Egypt during the period of Roman domination and placed under the invocation of Hermes Trimegistus. Probably Hermeticism is the Hellenic attempt to systematize philosophical part of the religious and mystical doctrines of the late Egyptian culture, although other oriental influences cannot be ruled out. Pranya Paramita means the perfection of transcendent wisdom in Buddhism. It refers to this perfected way of seeing the nature of reality, as well as the embodiment of the concept in the Bodhisattva known as the Great Mother. It is equivalent to the goddess Sophia or Greece and to Saint Sophia or Saint Sapientia in the Christian tradition. She is the holy wisdom. The great work. The work is to do something or to work at it. A work is a thing done and produced by an agent, a labor done by an artisan, a moral action directed to the profit of the soul, or a means you or power of the Holy Spirit. By keeping silent, you understand, by speaking, you speak. Though conceives the world in silence, and only, but excuse me, thought conceives the world in silence, and only the word of silence and thought is salvation. Opus Magnum or great work is an alchemical term for the process of creating the so-called philosopher's stone. It has been used to describe personal and spiritual transmutation in the emetic tradition, attributed to the laboratory processes and chemical color changes used as a model for the process of individuation and as a resource in art and literature. The Opus Magnum has continued in New Age and New Hermetic movements, which sometimes gave us new symbolism and meaning to the process. Originally, it had four stages, Nigredo or Blackening, Albedo or Whitening, Citrinias or Yellowing, and Rubedo or Reddening. However, my knowledge goes in a different order, yellow, red, black, and white. The origin of these four phases can be tra traced back to, at least, the first century. Thosimo of Panopolis wrote that it was known by Mary the Jewess. Uh, the Emerald Tablet is the oldest document providing a recipe. Others include the Mutus Liber, the Twelve Keys by Basilius Valentinus, the Emblems by Stefan Michael Spatcher, 
and the Twelve Gates by Josh Ripley. Alchemy. In the history of science, alchemy, from Arabic alchemilla, is an ancient esoteric practice and philosophical discipline that combines elements of chemistry, metallurgy, physics, medicine, astrology, semiotics, mysticism, spiritualism, and art. Alchemy was practiced in Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, Persia, India, and China, in ancient Greece and the Roman Empire, in the Islamic Empire, and then in Europe until the 18th century, in a complex network of schools and philosophical systems spanning at least 2,500 years. The magician is the master the master of alchemy. Alchemy is transformation. The quest for perfection is initiated through alchemy. We are the world. When we transform ourselves, the world in which we live will also be transformed. The parsit or heroism, hope, grace, and love are legacies of the eternal. On the spiritual plane of alchemy, alchemists had to transmute their own soul before transmuting metals. This meant that they had to purify the self themselves, prepare themselves through prayer and fasting. Enlightenment was only achieved after arduous years of rigorous stud study and experimentation. Once the apprent apprentice was able to control the fire, the time of the processes and the processes themselves in the plant kingdom. He was ready to access the major arcana, that is, the same works in the animal and mineral kingdom. They held that the potency of remedies was proportional to each nature. For the alchemists, every substance was composed of three parts, mercury, sulfur, and salt. This being the common names commonly used to designate the spirit, soul, and body. These three parts were called principles. By manipulation of the substances and through different operations, they separated each one of the three parts that then had to be purified individually, each one according to the regime of fire that is propitious to it. The salt with fashion fire and the mercury and the sulfur with recurrent and soft distillations. After being purified the three parts in a labor that used to take a long time and during which the planetary aspects had to be washed, the three parts had to be united to from again the initial substance. Once all this was done, the substance acquired certain powers, objectives. Throughout the centuries, the main objectives of alchemy were six, but only one, only, only one of them was the main one. First, to carry out the process known as chrysopea. This process consisted of transforming ordinary metals, such as lead, into noble metals, especially gold. Second, to discover the elixir of immortality. Third, to develop panaceas capable of curing any type of disease. Fourth, to elaborate a universal solvent known as alkahest. It has believed that this substance would dissolve any material, especially metals, to obtain elemental matter. Fifth, creation of the philosopher's stone, in many cases as a solution for the four previous objectives. Sixth, transformation of the human being and his spiritual self-realization. This is the main one, and the rest are begins. Philosopher's Stone 
Both the transmutation of ordinary metals into gold and the universal panacea symbolized the evolution from an imperfect, sick, corruptible and ephemeral state to a perfect one, healthy, incorruptible and eternal state. The philosopher's stone then represented some mystical key that would make this evolution possible. Applied to the alchemist himself, his twin goal symbolized his evolution from ignorance to enlightenment, and the stone represented some hidden spiritual truth or power that would lead to that goal. The philosopher's stone is a raw material, a legendary alchemical substance said to be able to convert base metals such as lead into gold or silver. Occasionally, it was also believed to be an elixir of life, useful for rejuvenation and possibly for achieving immortality. For many centuries, it was the most coveted subject in alchemy. The philosopher's stone was the central symbol of the mystical terminology of alchemy, symbolizing perfection at its highest expression, enlightenment and heavenly bliss. The efforts to discover the philosopher's stone were known as the Opus Magnum or the Great Wake. Elias Ashmole and the anonymous author of Gloria Mundi, 1620, claimed that its history goes back to Adam who acquired the knowledge of the stone directly from its creator. This knowledge is said to have been passed down through the biblical patriarchs, giving them their longevity. The legend of the stone was also compared to the biblical story of Solomon's, Solomon's temple and the rejected cornerstone described in Psalm 118. The theoretical roots describing the creation of a stone go back to Greek philosophy. Later, alchemists used the classical elements, the concept of anima mundi, and the creation stories presented in texts such as Plato's Timaeus, as analogies for their process. According to Plato, the four elements are derived from a common source of raw material associated with cows. The water of life. Jesus spoke of the water of life. The preparation of the water of life was a popular experiment among European alchemists. The aqua vitae was supposed to be a leachate of the solid compound resulting from the great wake, which was the philosopher's stone or stone of transmutation. This water of life was attributed the property of transmitting human lead into philosophical human gold, and thus it was recognized as the elixir of eternal youth. Water is usually called the universal solvent because of the great number of substances on which it can act as a solvent. The aqua fortis, meaning water of eternal youth, by the pseudo Geber, an anonymous Spanish Andalusian alchemist who wrote under the name of Geber, published several books establishing the theory long held by his colleagues that all metals were composed of various proportions of sulfur and mercury. This alchemist was one of the first to describe nitric acid, aqua regia, and aqua fortis. Excuse me. The Regio art uses the aqua regia of the alchemists. The aqua regia is a highly corrosive and famine solution, yellow in color, formed by mixing nitric acid and hydrochloric acid in a proportion of one to three parts by volume. It is one of the few mixtures 
capable of dissolving gold, platinum and all other metals. It was so named because it can dissolve the so-called royal or noble metals. It is used in some analytical procedures. The aqua regia is not very stable, so it must be prepared just before use. The Gemma alchemist Andreas Libau, better known by the Latinized name of Libavius, published the book Alchemy in 1597, in which apart from describing medieval achievements in alchemy, he describes for the first time the process of making aqua regia in the 17th century. From the Middle Ages onwards, some alchemists increasingly began to see these metaphysical aspects as the true foundations of alchemy and the chemical substances, physical states and material processes as mere metaphors for spiritual entities, states and transformations. Until the 17th century, alchemy was actually considered as a serious science in Europe. For example, Isaac Newton devoted far more time and writings to the study of alchemy than to optics or physics, but he died of mercury poisoning, according to analysis of his hair. Other eminent alchemists of the Western world include Roger Bacon, Saint Thomas Aquinas, Taicho Bray, Thomas Brome, Ramon Jul or Raimundo Lulio, and Parmigiano. The Panacea. The Panacea was a medical remedy that was said to cure all diseases of even prolonged life indefinitely. It was sought after by alchemists for centuries, especially in the Middle Ages. The word Panacea comes from the Greek word Panakos and means all purpose remedy. In Greek mythology, Panacea was a goddess of health. In ancient Greek Pana Panakeia, all healing, daughter of Asclepius and Epione, daughter in turn of Helios the Sun, and sister of Iaso, the healer. Aigea, Gieia, Igieia, Aceso, and Egel. She helped with her sisters in the wake of her father to cure and make medicines with plants. Panacea was said to have a poultice of potion, which, or potion which, with which she cured the sick. This brought about the concept of panacea in medicine, a substance to cure, to cure all diseases. The goddess had a temple at Oropo. Universal solvent. The universal solvent of alchemy was called alcahest. It was believed that this substance would allow to dissolve any material, especially metals, to obtain elemental matters and to create a philosopher's stone. This concept dates back to the second half of the 17th century. The word which Paracelsus derived from the Arabic word alkali is taken up by Jean Baptista, Jean Baptista van Helmont. According to Paracelsus, recipe alkahest was composed of lime, alcohol, and potassium carbonate. However, this recipe was not intended to be a universal solvent, and there are many other false recipes because no one has discovered the mystery. According to the alchemists, alkahest was an element capable of dissolving all metals, and by which all terrestrial bodies could be reduced to their primitive being or original matter or ether, from which they were formed. According to the alchemists, it was a power that worked in the astral forms or souls of all things and was capable of dissolving them. A potential problem involving alkahest is that 
if it dissolves everything, it could not be placed in a vessel because it would dissolve it. Dissolve it. Helmont considered Alcahest to have endless reusability, calling it immortal. He also used the term Maccabean fire because of its similarities to the thick water in the book of Maccabees in the Old Testament. Other names of Alcahest include clear water re reduced to its minutest atoms or salt exalted to its highest degree. According to Helmond and Robert Boyle, Alcahest ha had a microstructure, meaning that it was composed of eternal, extremely small, homogeneous corpus corpuscles. Corpusculus, corpus clis. This structure allowed the alkahist corpus clis to move between the corpus clis of all other materials and mechanically separate them without altering their base materials of themselves, unlike ordinary corrosives making it infinitely reusable. The volatile salt or tartar, also known as pyrotartaric acid or glutaric acid was considered both a substitute for alkahist and a component of alkahist. Spagyria. Spagyria or minor alchemy is a name given to the production of medicine from plants using alchemical procedures. Among these procedures are fermentation, distillation and extraction of mineral components from plant ashes. These processes were in use in medieval alchemy generally for the separation and purification of metals in ores, or to separate salt from water or other aqueous solutions. Spacheria most commonly refers to the tincture of the plant, to which has been added by a process also the ash of the already calcined plant. The original justification for these special plant-based tinctures seems to have been that using only an alcohol extract cannot be expected to contain all the medicinal properties of a ligamine plant, and what this system deals with is that the mineral component of the plant is burnt, prepared separately, and then added back to potentiate the alcoholic tincture. The roots of the wet, of the wet, therefore, first refer to the extraction or separation process, and then to the recombination process. They argue that this plant tinctures possess superior properties to simple alcohol tinctures. In theory, these spatiaric tinctures can also include the fermentation material of the plant material as well as any aromatic components, which can be obtained through distillation. The final product of these processes is called essence. According to Paracelsus, nature itself was raw and unfinished, and the human being had the God-given task of evolving things to a higher level. In contemporary terms, I would be the ex it would be the extraction of the essential oils by evaporation, and with that vapor, the sulfur would be achieved. Then fermentation of the rest of the plant and distillation of the alcohol produced would be what will produce the mercury. Destruction of the mineral components from the calcined ashes of the plant would constitute the salt the dissolution of the essential oils in the alcohol and then the dissolution of the mineral salts is when the final portion would be produced. Definition of truth. Truth is a judgment or proposition that cannot be rationally denied. It is the property of a thing to remain always the same without any mutation. The conformity of things to the mind's concept of them and the conformity of what is said to what is felt or thought. The use of the word truth embraces also honesty 
honesty, good faith, and human sincerity in general, also the agreement of knowledge with the things asserted to be realities, the facts or the particular thing, and finally the relation of the facts or things as a whole in the constitution of the whole, the universe. Things are true when they are reliable, faithful, because they fulfill what they offer. For the Greeks, or on the other hand, truth is identical with reality, and the latter is considered as identity, which consists in what remains beneath the changing appearances. Such is the arche or arche. It is to say, principle understood in various forms, matter, numbers, atoms, ideas, etc., which remain below the sensible of concrete experience, so that it is only known by thought as a function or faculty of the soul, the understanding. Truth is conceived as aleteia, aleteia or discovery of the being that is hidden by the veil of appearance. Some great philosophers held that truth was either not accessible to mortals or had very limited accessibility, which formed an early philosophical skepticism. The Stoics conceived of truth as accessible from impressions through cognitive grasping. The Jewish tradition and Christianity introduced a special dimension, revealed truth sustained by faith. In the Middle Ages, Christianity, the official religion of the empire, posed a, as a problem the, the relations between knowledge and faith versus knowledge by reason. In early Muslim philosophy, Avicenna defined truth as that which corresponds in the mind to that which is outside it. The truth of a thing is the poverty is the property of the being of each thing that in it has been established. The actualized truth, updated truth. What is truth? A lie will go halfway around the world before truth has a chance to put on his pants. That is why the media is controlling the airwaves. Truth is always catching up, and by the time the truth hits the news, most of the time is too late for the ship to accept it. No one knows the truth about this more than the fact that the truth is as elusive as a rabbit baiting a predator. Here is the truth. People will swallow a lie hook, lying and sinker faster than the truth because the truth pulls no punches and hits harder than Mike Tyson in his prime. People like to stay warm and fuzzy in their own little world of delusions. Surrender. To some people, it means to give up, to give up control to another, to subjugate oneself. The opposite is true. Surrender is surrendering to the flow of the universe knowing that whatever happens, all will be well and at this, and at its highest and best. Do you choose to look and listen with your heart, or just look at the written text and listen to the spoken words with your mind? In this three-dimensional reality, words are spells, which can be used to affect us in different positive or negative ways. If we aren't aware of their power, because, as they say, the devil is in the details. We humans, along with most highly evolved, evolved brings, once used telepathy to communicate, but we lost this ability, as we lowered our frequency by abusing this faculty. Both sides in this information war know the power of words and use it to their own ends. Just reading words on a blog or listening to videos or television doesn't give one the knowledge of the truth 
as anyone can claim anything and say it is the truth. Truth can only be experienced intuitively through the heart, whereas our five senses can easily deceive us. Words can appear to be the truth a lie, or appear to lie and be the truth. There are those who know how to play with words to project the opposite energy to their apparent meaning. The truth or lie is not in the words as much as in the energy used to create them. This must be felt intuitively of if we are to evolve into a fifth dimensional existence. Ultimately, we choose what to believe in. We are being tested to believe in ourselves and our inner knowing. Predictions The Atlantis report states that a stock market crash is coming in September. It opines that a market crash is inevitable. Stimulus efforts will only exacerbate the recession. He adds that implosion is going to be spectacular. But the tragic part will be that people will have, will have to deal with skyrocketing prices with no assets to fall back on. Domino effect according to the Storm Rider. I have been warning for months about the coming civilization event. Chinese banking systems are being broken and controlled banks are pulling money out. Inside sources say Bitcoin will rise before the crash and then break. The ripple effect will be felt from country to country as China's stocks and companies reach all nations. The agenda of the Davos Great Reset has always been to break the markets. It would bring global currency and digital human traf tracking, but I expect it to fail. The crash is imminent and effects such as food shortages will take place. There is inflation, the price of gas is rising and is still rising. When the crash happens, the banks will not move money. Transactions will be frozen and power companies will not be able to pay for natural resources like coal. And delivery companies will be paralyzed. It leads to closed markets and the store closures. Many events are taking place. Seven possible causes of next financial crisis. The great financial historian Charles Kindleberger, Kindleberger pointed out in the 70s that for several centuries history showed that there was a financial crisis about once every 10 years. In every decade since his classic manias, panics and crashes of 1978, such crises have continued to erupt in turn in the 80s, 90s, 2000s and 2010s and again in 2020. That could trigger the next crisis in this long recurring series. He suggests seven possibilities that no one sees it coming. A hack of the financial system. All central banks going wrong the housing collapse and electrical system failure, and the next crisis and the major war. Palantir predicts a crash. Palantir talks about preparing for one and what it could mean for your money and your future. They just bought $50 million worth of gold bullion and we can expect them to do it for a serious reason. No one knows for sure what the reason is, but there is speculation that it could have to do with cyber attacks or runaway inflation. It is happening now. For those who happily go along with the phrase, it is happening now, I reply, show me that it is. The it is happening now is typically only a few days in the future, 
I can happily give up these few days. So, why not stop saying it is happening now and instead start providing verifiable evidence of things that have already actually happened? Perhaps it would be wise to make a firm contract with yourself as follows. Ignore anyone who is saying it is happening now and focus instead on raising the frequency and requesting free will from higher spiritual forces to make it happen. Dimensional shift. A dimensional shift is coming. A transition is coming. A dimensional shift that will reduce the density of the third dimension to move into higher dimensions where the body is not in this solid state. You, you came here because you want to master the evolutionary process and live with it. This will be very exciting because it means it will work in many realities. All the answers are buried within you. Questions will arise in your mind so that you can give the answers from your own being. To do this, you must first believe that the information is stored there. Humankind is learning a great lesson now. The lesson is, of course, to recognize our connection to the Supreme Creator and to all that exists. The lesson, the lesson is to realize that everything is connected to everything and that we are part of everything. There are many cultures and societies in the vastness of space, and these cultures and societies have existed from the beginning on this planet and beyond. They came to help. There are many who traveled here for many reasons. Most of the strangers are here to lift us, to lift us up. up. But there are also people who are here for other reasons, obviously. Manage your expectations by Joe. Let's all sit back, truly see and feel what is going on and how we are selfish, selfishly a small part of the biggest event in the world like never seen before. It can also be said based on the currency we have. We have a responsibility to allocate the blessings with careful thought and respect for how and why we take the risk. Manage your expectations, be patient, and most importantly, step back and see and feel what is really happening in our, in, and how crazily we will be blessed. Thanks a lot, dear friends.